So I've already made a couple of videos talking about the TCG industry this year and how big it's getting and just how many different companies are getting involved with a lot of the new TCGs coming out. And of course, with how big TCGs have been getting, a lot of the existing big names in the TCG industry are also going to be looking at it from different angles. And so there was a really interesting interview article that went up last week, actually, where one of the big magazines, uh, which is the Card Gamer magazine, interviewed Kidani, the CEO of Bushiroad, and basically asked him about where is Bushiroad situated and where are Bushiroad games situated in this big TCG market boom and how things are performing. So I think I want to take a look at it because I think for a lot of you, this should be pretty interesting because I know some of you play Vice, some of you play Evolve, and of course we all play Vanguard. And um, I think that talking about this is pretty important. Um, and I found it very interesting because he talks about some things that I never really expected. So let's take a look at it. So this basically was, this interview was done after the last uh, strategy presentation, which was, I want to say in end of March, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, March 21st and 22nd. So they interviewed Kidani, looking back on the strategy presentation, asking about the future prospects of Bushiroad. So what will be the trends in the TCG industry in March? So immediately they start off with asking Kidani, what are their thoughts on Union Arena? So Union Arena, for those of you that don't know, is a card game released by Bandai. It is a direct competitor to Weisschwarz because they use a lot of the licenses that Bandai has access to. Like, uh, so far they've had like Jujutsu Kaisen, Code Geass, they have um, uh, Hunter x Hunter, a lot of different things. Now they have like, they just released a Demon Slayer as well as a Idol Master set. There's gonna be Tekken in it, like Tales of Arise, all kinds of stuff. So they asked, what are your thoughts on Union Arena? And Kidani says, from our perspective, we feel this product has greatly expanded the market for character card games. In that sense, I'm great for, grateful, but for Vice, it is a competing product, so I think that we cannot lose, right? So it is, after all, a competitive, a competing title in that sense. You know, he says, there's been a lot of products that were released in a short time, and if you don't know the context, they basically released, like, just a whole bunch of stuff in for the release day. So he's saying, he's like, I'm a bit worried about the balance when playing card games. It's hard to play test, you know, when you um, release that much at once. But if they release 10 products and they're all balanced, I think it's going to be a wonderful card game. Most important thing in a character card game is to have a good balance. And if you can't win at all with the title that you're recommending, you lose your motivation. That's what I will focus on in the future. So basically making sure that, you know, if you're putting out all these IPs into the game, and same goes for Vice and Union Arena, that everything is relatively well balanced, otherwise your players will lose focus, lose motivation, right? Like for me, I own a good Nagan deck in Vice, and like I don't play Vice because it's just not good compared to the whatever good is good in Vice. So next, uh, this is more specific for um, Japan, but here in Tokyo and Akihabara, there was a Vice specialty store called Vice Schwat Mat opened. Um, by a partner company, so it's not actually by Bushiroad. Um, and of course, you know, the shop has been doing so well that Kidani himself, like, my friends met Kidani there last week. He was just chilling there too, so, um, yeah, he's very happy with it. Hundreds of people were lined up when it opened. There was talk that a tenant on the second floor of the building that houses the Card Kingdom in Akihabara store would be vacant. So basically, like, um, where the Card Kingdom in Akihabara is, there was a, like, a hardware store underneath it before, but they, like, moved out of there. So basically, it became the Vice Schwartz shop. So, um, basically, he's like, It'd be great if people from overseas would come to visit after COVID-19. The sales number of customers after the opening seems to be good and it's a rather, you know, it seems like it's the real deal. More overseas people will come to Japan. I think it's a store that is easy for, you know, more casual users to. So light users usually means casual users to enter. This atmosphere is influenced by the Blau Dog, who is the, the mascot of Weisschwarz Blau. And because of, you know, just having Shioko, it's, you know, the image of Moe and cute. Um, is a stronger, but the Blau Dog gives a more light, casual image. So um, he says there's even like couples showing up to the Vice store as well. So it's very close to that Kibata station. The car is displayed on the first floor, making it easy to find. So if inbound tourism resumes in earnest and domestic travel increases, I think there'll be quite a lot of people coming to our stores. If you want to open a store like this in other areas, please, please feel free to contact us. So he's saying like, hey, you want to you wanna expand on, you want to you wanna open stores like this, you know, for like Vice or um you know for vice it's uh he's like feel free to let us know so 
the operation of Vice Schwarzmont is, lo is loose connection, but is Bouchard invested in it? It's like, nope, we're not. It's actually a completely separate company running it. So it's a specialty Vice store, and so they help with the sales promotion, but, um, you know, they, they basically just helped out with, like, providing product, but they actually didn't, like, invest in the store. So now this is the important part, which is looking back on what they announced in March, right? So they had a separate day for Vice and Blau because it's Vice's 15th year anniversary. They talked about Vanguard as well as Shadowverse Evolve, but you know, it was the first time they held the strategy presentation over two different days. And so, you know, they even had like a little like concert and stuff like that. And um, there was a live audience, which was also quite cool. So for the, you know, he says it was, it was the right decision to do it with an audience. Um, you know, they they took pictures of the exhibitions and stuff like that. And, you know, they were announcing new titles, but also they had a little talk show with the developers of Bouchard card games, including the developers of Vanguard's actual rules. Um, and, you know, they, they had a nice little variety corner. So um, they were looking at how the streams were doing. And I have to apologize here to Kidani because I always steal viewers from this these streams, unfortunately. Um, so he said, at the best, it had about 6,300. Fell below 4,000 at the end, but it was around 5,000 viewers on average. And I know that I usually steal about 1,000 of these viewers <laughs> from these streams, but somebody has to do it for the English community, right? If they're gonna do it, if they're gonna, if they're not gonna hire me officially to translate, I will do it unofficially. So I'm sorry. I will take your views um, and I will keep doing it. I, this is my 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 place in the world. I'm simply, it's the endless now, and the endless now will repeat until they they invite me on an official capacity to translate the streams. So anyway, the second day he says got a bit weaker. So Vanguard right now is at the end of the anime season, and there's a big difference in enthusiasm when the anime starts as well as when it's the end of the season. So watching three and a half hours of streaming in the first day is already exhausting, right? So um, you know, they're basically saying they did like a little lottery, uh, like a giveaway for Vice, and they had like 20,000 retweets and the number of Twitter followers increased by 30,000, so it's great. Um, so basically, then they were uh, talking about how, um, you know, they were talking about Vice and its 15th anniversary. So um, basically saying like every time there's like a milestone, they'll make a special stream, but they don't want to like, you know, they don't want to like overdo it. So. Now they want to talk about some of the special announcements for each title. So for Vice, they announced that like Sakura Miko, Suise, um, uh, and then uh, Muna and um, Kiara from Hololive will be the ambassadors of Vice for the 15th anniversary. And so until now, it's always been like voice actresses. So this time they were quite surprised. So the reason why Gidani says they, you know, got the VTubers as ambassadors is because it's reassuring to have someone who can speak not only Japanese, but also foreign languages such as English. So we want to make Vice not just a hit in Japan, but around the world. So recently there's been like Disney and whatnot in Vice. So it feels like the world of Vice has been expanded. So yes, he says, we did well at the 15th anniversary and the future work is also quite strong. This year is full of titles that I think we'll be able to release once every two or three years. So Hall Live set two was well received. Disney 100 was released, like was actually insane. Like people were ordering Disney 100, like insanity. It was like super scalped. And there were so many orders for Disney 100 that they had no choice but to cut them off. There was too many. So um, it's more than, it's like three times than the number of orders they expected. So in June, there's Chainsaw Man and Liko Reko and Uo Musume, so they think they have a really strong lineup overall for Vice. So then um, they said that um, there's something about Shakugan Oshana. So they basically, Kidani wants more people to come back to Vice, right? So people that don't play anymore because their old decks don't get support. So stuff like, um, you know, Shakugan Oshana will be kind of like, you know, adjusted to be modern again so he's saying he says that um you know they're preparing works that will attract attention not only to those who are currently playing but also who have retired from vice so this year's vice will grow considerably in terms of sales but in rural areas there's many shops that don't carry vice properly so there's potential future growth so he wants to open the specialty store in uh, many places to keep growing vice for blau um you know uh they're basically talking about you know the the lineup for products so they basically want to right now Vice product like Vice Blau product sells well because there's a lot of like you know there's a lot of um, actual titles that people care about. So they announced stuff like Blue Lock and whatnot. But you know, you know people would just like people just co are collecting. But he wants the players to actually play the game, not just collect, right? To not have like the Pokemon in English issue. So 
basically they want to also not just have female players for Blau, but also some male players too. So that way the Blau player base will grow. So, um, you know, he's, he's trying to improve on that. So they have like a Tokyo Revenger set and like Prince of Tennis. Um, so they want to, you know, strengthen the player side with that too. Then talk about Rebirth for you. So we always meme on Rebirth for you, and it's honestly, I think, the worst performing Bushroad game, even at Daivanga Sai, like at the big uh, Bushroad card game festival that I was at um, just a couple days ago. Definitely felt like there weren't that many people there for it. Um, feels even less than what Buddy Fight had before. So just saying. Um, so yeah, when I ask about Rebirth, you said that Rebirth has a, you know, it's a bit different. But, you know, Rebirth hit its third anniversary, and so how was this year, how has it been, right? So, basically, um, you know, Rebirth got affected very big by COVID, um, and it's doing considerably well despite the fact that it, you know, basically started in COVID. And it has strong mobility, so with Vice, the product schedule is already decided, so it's difficult to move forward, but with Rebirth, you know, they can quickly produce new sets. I'm not sure why, honestly. Uh, maybe it's because a lot of their sets are, like, <laughs> wrestling. But they also do, like, I don't know, there's, like, um, Blue Archive, and, like, they have, like, Dinazanon and Gridman and all this stuff, like, feels like they're, like, same as Vice titles, honestly. Um, and, um, yeah, so, like, all the wrestling stuff, so they were pretty happy with how successful it was. And now about Shadowverse Evolve. So Vanguard is more so at the later stage of this article. So in terms of Evolve, April marks the first anniversary, but in addition to the regular products, we've also released, uh, you know, they've released Uomusume, like the collab products, and there's also the Japan Championship. So it's been a very fulfilling year. Evolve is a title that is gaining popularity for its gameplay, and I felt that we should continue to focus on that. So in Japan, a lot of people play Evolve because the gameplay is very, very fulfilling. Like, it's very fun to play. It literally feels like Buddy Fight 2, in my opinion, if you ever play Buddy Fight. So, um, you know, they want to keep holding events, make it a good uh, meta, and also not care just for the big cities, but also for the rural areas too. And, the, you know, Evolve will continue to grow if they do so. So, um, you know, they have like the Shadowverse ranking battle. So Shadowverse Evolve is the only Bushard game where if you play in locals, you actually get points on a ranking system and you get special prizes. So like they do all kinds of little things like um, they're doing like a signed deck box by like Kimura, KMR, the developer of, um, you know, Shadowverse and Gramble Fantasy and, you know, the producer rather. Um, and then sometimes they do playmats and stuff like that. But basically, um, on top of the chop tournaments, because they're so like try hard focused now, they want to let people that play more casually have events too. So they're going to start doing these little exchange meetings as well. Um, and they also launched an official judge program for Shadowverse Evolve. And I saw the judges at Daivanga Sai, they have full on like beautiful shirts. Like they look the best out of all the judges. Um, so the judge program seems to be going quite well. They had 1,300 applicants for the first examination. So pretty good. But finally for Vanguard, so the part that we care about a lot. So season two of Will Address has finished up and this is what Kidani thinks. So Kidani says, it's a well-made hobby anime, but he's like, I feel like, you know, there's a bit of regret in terms of how America was represented, right? So I think that's what we felt too while watching the anime is like America was just, they were there for a few days. They went from state to state to state. And then that was it, right? So just kind of like, there wasn't really too much. So it feels like maybe it wasn't really enough. So then he says, one thing that caught my attention was that it might not be necessary to explain all the card effects. I felt like explaining it made it me feel less exhilarated. So like less excited about what's happening. I'm worried a bit about that because the fight is getting better and better. I think they're doing their best to faithfully reproduce the abilities and explanations of the cards. And I think it's a fun element for those who have played Vanguard. But for those who are just watching this work, as an anime, I wonder if it's, you know, transmitted. So I'd like to consider this as a future issue. So, you know, I think this is definitely a topic that we've discussed and they've tried multiple times. Like in the G series, I remember the first season of G, they didn't explain, like the fights weren't really fights. It was like FGO, right? It was just, you know, yeah, there's like a discord between casual and hardcore Vanguard anime watchers who like people, some people just want to watch the characters interact and then some people just want to watch the fights in in action and it's like it really is hard to balance that because a lot of people do just like the characters and their shenanigans but you know i feel like the fights have gotten really good lately so i'd like for them to keep it but that's because i'm a vanguard player so i, I always will feel like that so 
Let's move on talking about cards. It was announced that the booster pack to be released in June and August will include collaboration cards with Youth Comic Magazines, uh, Young Animal, and Big Comic Spirits. So, feels like a bit different. And so, yes, this is a very important question. This is probably one of my favorite parts of this whole interview is what actually is the current main user base for Vanguard? And the, the answer might surprise you, but there is a logic explanation for it. On average, around 26 years old. What do you think of this? Because to me, this is technically not a good thing. And the reason why is because this basically means that most, the great majority of the Vanguard player base started playing in high school and has been st sticking around with it the whole time, right? We're oldies. Yes, yeah, so obviously, you know, old man card game, old man card game, but there's a bigger issue around this is that card games such as One Piece, Pokemon, etc. Of course, they're they're newer slash, you know, very big IP. But Yu-Gi-Oh! I've heard that Yu-Gi-Oh! suffers the same issue where the average player is much older than before. But that basically just means that it's hard for new to like to recommend this game to like high schoolers and, and like younger players. I mean, Vanguard wasn't exactly like cheap back in the day either. Like you had to pay insane money just for a PG you have to pay crazy money for the end or MLB or, you know, Chaos Breaker back in the day. Like Vanguard always had like a price issue, no matter which era of the game it was. Like Vanguard has always had expensive eras. The fact that the average player is 26 is like, that basically means that it's mostly played by like university students slash workers and people that can, you know, spend a lot of money, right? So, you know, I was playing Jet Messiah. I think so. And that's why I think it's really good that they make decks like Gandiva, where it's a deck that is very easy to recommend to someone in school, right? Because it's essentially just a deck that, you know, you can, at least in Japan, you can build for the price of a AAA video game, right? So if a high schooler can afford a AAA video game, they can afford to build Gandiva, right? So Gandiva is an exception. Yes, it is an exception, but I would like for it to become the norm. I'd like for them to do more of this, right? If we can have more decks like Gandiva, it would be great, where you can build a whole deck just in this one pack. Like, you can technically ignore all old cards with it, as long as you have PGs, basically, right? So, I think as long as they can keep making a bit more, and as, as well, like, also in, like, set 11, they're doing a bit more of, like, that popper support for, like, the, the weird rad lines, like Shield Fisher, and, you know, maybe make start decks a bit, you know, more accessible as well, like, the Youth Quake, Drajuled, and Leonorn ones, wouldn't necessarily recommend those for someone to start the game, but maybe the Graham Grace, Favernil, and Orphist ones might be a bit better, I hope, right? So it would be nice to see growth in new players. But basically, K9 sales on average, the Vanguard player is 26 years old, and these two youth comic magazines um, have a high readership and usually by this demographic. So, you know, the illustrations of a manga artist is different from an illustrator's, and so he wants to basically add a bit of a different taste than the previous Vanguard by introducing these manga illustrators. So this is very interesting. From now on, we have a policy of adding collaborations to each Vanguard set and creating a topic. So Bang Dream was in set 10, released in April, and in set 11 there's gonna be Mushi King. And so uh, he hopes to continue this kind of collaboration in future, and expand the rage of Vanguard little by little. And I think this is pretty good because instead of doing whole collab sets like Monster Strike or Shaman King, which I think are fine, adding the collabs into the main sets is a cool way to basically grow that a little bit. Because when somebody opens, let's say, Shaman King packs, they're still just seeing Shaman King. They're not actually seeing Vanguard for what it is. Whereas here, you're actually expanding Vanguard, like your people that are into Mushi King will have to buy set 11 and see what Vanguard actually is while collecting their Mushi King cards, right? So I think that's also a very cool approach, and I do definitely think that this is a cool idea from Kidani's side too. Thinking of trying to get as close as possible to the sales of Vice, but the growth of Vice is overwhelming right now. Vice has tripled in size in the last three years, and if you include Blau, it has been four times as much. So I'm very happy to see that Kidani is aiming to push Vanguard to the point of sales of Vice. Like that's 
You have to have a good strategy for that. You have to have a good strategy if you want to push Vanguard's success to the same level of Vice with its Hololive money. But, I mean, Vice is triple in size, a big part of that is Hololive. Like, even adding Hololive to set 8 didn't necessarily push that, so... I wonder how they're planning to continue to, you know, push the growth of Vanguard. But I'm really happy. Like, to me, this makes me feel secure knowing that they're really dedicating to um, add strength in Vanguard's growth. So, I'd like to ask you about the recent card game industry. This is the my other interesting point. The card game market itself has grown rapidly, but this is largely due to the growth of the Pokemon card game. Yep. Vice is this big? You didn't know? Vice is one of the biggest games. Vice is one of the biggest games because of the collector market. All thanks to Hololive, by the way. Hololive is a money printing machine. Sales of Vice have grown significantly, but in terms of growth potential, the sales overseas are larger than those in Japan. In terms of domestic market share, it is actually rather declining. So it's the English side that is carrying Busho right now. The tables have turned. They're realizing the foreign potential. However, I think it's time to turn aggressive, and we'll continue to grow Vice as far as we can. We're thinking to, uh, that the start of next year will be the time of the game for Vanguard, and we're preparing various things for that. Bruce believes that the card game industry will continue to grow this year. So, this is also interesting. Um, quite a few people in Japan were discussing this line. So, the time, it's, it's game time for Vanguard at the start of next year. And... From what I've seen from the Japanese discussions of this specific line in the interview is that basically um, whenever like this kind of like quote, because this interview with Kadani is done quite frequently. I didn't know about it before, but apparently they often say, say these kind of things before introducing like a make, new mechanic or like a gimmick. So like when G Guardians, for example, were introduced um, is what like I saw one Twitter user mentioned that it's like like they said they said something similar and then like g guardians were introduced after that stuff like that so maybe we'll get some extra mechanic but i feel like we're getting mechanics a lot in the d series like they just like added stride again and then it's like you know they added these um you know like regulus pieces and stuff like that so the gimmick i wanted the online client true that is also the gimmick i want too <laughs> that's the gimmick i want as well so we'll see what they mean by this if if this means like online client, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe there's, if there's a master duel being planned for Vanguard, that would be fantastic. But I feel like, you know, if Vice's growth, and he said it quite a few times in the interview, equals growth of Vice overseas, does that mean that they're going to be pushing more on the Western side? I guess we'll see. And the Western side's been doing pretty good. I mean, if you look at the participation rates in um, in the Spring Fest this year, there's been uh, some pretty high numbers. Like, the standard ones especially are crazy because the standard numbers are, like, in the hundreds, right, as compared to the other formats. And it's really cool to see, like, every basically every single Spring Fest having hundreds of players for Standard is really nice to see that, you know, people are very enthusiastic about the format. I think Standard, as I said, you know, ever since like last year of like August slash uh, September has been very, very strong. And um, it's been really, really cool for that as well. So I think that this interview with Kidani was very interesting. Definitely gave a lot of cool insights about the card game industry. And of course, about our beloved Vanguard as well. So I'll try to keep uh, checking for these every time there is a product stream. So every three months, I guess there's always a new one. So uh, look forward to the next one on Kidani's column, I guess, is probably what we're going to call this. But there's actually quite a few old, interesting Kidani interviews from like 2016, 2017 that I'd like to go over one day. Um, that I've gone over on stream before, but haven't turned into videos. So definitely would like to do that. But yes, for those of you confused about why Vice is so big and you don't see them show up at Spring Fest, it's because it's... The collectors so just keep that in mind but yes that is it for this video please subscribe i feel like i don't ask people enough but not a lot of you watching these videos are actually subscribed and you should definitely do that because i'm trying to grow this damn channel you know the only way that can happen is if you subscribe so please do that if you like this video give it a like and again if you haven't already subscribed make sure you do that but anyway that's gonna be it for me today thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time Bye bye